Sopi chana bala la ba Giri bada dhari Yasodanandana Rajajana Ranjana Yasodanandana Rajajana Ranjana Yasodanandana Rajajana Ranjana Yamuna Tira Vana Chari Yamuna Tira Vana Chari Yamuna Tira Vana Chari Radha Madhava Punjabi Hari Radha Madhava Punjabi Hari Gopi jana balaba kere paradhari Sodanandana Pratajana Ranjana Yasodanandana Pratajana Ranjana Yasodanandana Pratajana Ranjana Yamuna Tira Vana Chari Yamuna Tira Vana Chari Jaya Radha Marva Kunjabi Hari Jirada Madhava Kunda Bihari Jaya Vishnu Pada Paramahamsa Paripraja Gacharya Ashtota Sadashri A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada Ki Ananta Kotavaishna of Indiki Grantaraj Srimad Bhagavatam Ki Shri Gandicha Majana Ki Shri Chaitanya Charitam Rita Ki Jai Gora Premanandi All glorious to the assembled devotees All glorious to Shri Guru and Gurango All glorious to Shri Prabhupada Namam Vishnu Badaya Krishna Vastaya Bhutale Srimati Bhaktivedanta Swami Ki Namami Namaste Saraswate Devi Gora Vani Pracharine Nivasesha Sanyavari Pastichari Shatarine Hare Krishna We will need some translation maybe Nice Aladar Prabhu maybe you need translation More or less okay um, Anybody else? 
into into Ukrainian. Your daughter, you understand English? Yes. Little bit. <laughs> Your daughter does not understand English. Pardon? Father is a teacher. Slowly learning. Yeah. It'll be very good for your daughter to learn English wherever you are. She's a very intelligent girl, so good time to learn. Any other language? So, who would translate for mice? Pardon? You will sit next to mice? It seems like that's the only realistic requirement. Today is the annual Gundicha Marjana Festival. And Gundicha is the name of the temple in Puri where Lord Jagannath, Baladev and Subhadra during their Rathiyata parade, they travel from Sri Shetra, the temple of Jagannath, on the Rathiyata parade to the temple of Gundicha, named after the wife of Indradunna Maharaj. Her name was Gundicha. And there the deities reside for seven days before returning to their normal residence, you could say, Sri Shetra Temple. And so today, one day before the Rathiatra, is the Gundicha Marjana. Marjana means cleansing. Cleansing of the Gundicha Temple. So, um, of course, with our schedule, we don't have an official Rathayata festival here in New Mayapur. It could be something. We, I think we did it once, didn't we? A small one or twice. I don't I remember one time I think we did it here. And it could be done normally on the actual day. It could be when time and circumstance allow, incorporated as a part of a festival here at New Mayapur. Huh? Gundicha Marjana invite the entire congregation, whoever they may be, to come and uh, help clean the temple. Not saying it's dirty, by the way, but it can always be cleaned again and again and again, and uh, outside as well as inside. There's plenty to do. And then the next day could be a gorgeous Rathiatra festival. Well, Lord Jagannath, we have perhaps somebody has Jagannath deities here. Could be taken around New Mayapur, around the Grihastha units. And Grihastas can prepare some nice preparations for Lord Jagannath to offer. Could be. It'd be a nice festival. Something to, no pressure, but just something to think about. And perhaps in, who knows, in the future we could do this. Um, if it's within our capacity. Be nice. You already started this nice parikrama on Sunday of taking Prabhupada around the temple. It's very nice and inspiring. So, it's good. So today we'll read or hear a little bit about this uh, event, Gundicha Marjana, which is more than just a, uh, what would we say, a external activity of cleaning the temple. Much more. Jai Jai Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jai Advaita Chandra Jaya Gora Bhakta Vrinda 
Jai Jai Shri Chaitanya Jai Nityananda Jai Advaita Chandra Jaya Gora Bhakta Vrinda Jai Jai Shri Chaitanya Jai Nityananda Jai Advaita Chandra Jaya Gora Bhakta Vrinda So we'll be reading from the Chaitanya Charitamrita. I think there may be a verse on the board, is that correct? And is it text 135? Okay, so we'll chant this verse and then we'll proceed with the pastimes and some of the, you could say the deeper or the meanings, at least from our practical devotional service. Text 135, the cleansing of the Gundicha temple. E mata, e mata. Purudvara age, Pata, Yata, Sakala, Shodila, Taha, K, Vani Bay, Kata, He Mata Purudvara age, Pata, Yata, Sakala shodila taha ke vani be kata. He mata puradvara age pata yata. Sakala shodila taha ke vani be kata. E mata puradvara age patayata. Sakala shodila taha ke vani be kata. E mata puradvara age patayata. Sakala shodila taha kevani be kata. Some little error there. Is it correct? Somebody smudged the board. Somebody smudged the board. Oh, that makes it difficult. It's like our own consciousness when it gets smudged, it's not very clear. We can't see properly. What are we doing to uh, uh, rectify the smudge? Anything? Excuse me? Letters are missing. So. Oh, one or two letters are missing. We're trying to now add those one or two letters. <coughs> Here they come. Jai. Gorni Tai Krishna Bhagavan Madhagovinda Madhava Ki Jai. So anyone else like to, maybe it's corrected now, like to chant this amazing verse. E mata puradvara age patayata. E mata puradvara age patayata. Sakala so dilatata ke be kata. Sakala so dilatata ke be kata. Still a little bit more to add, it looks like. Is it up now? Is it correct? All good. Anyone else like to chant? E mata puradvara age patayata. E mata puradvara age patayata. Sakala shodila taha ke vani be kata. E mata puradvara age patayata. Sakala shodila taha ke vani be kata. Ladies. He mata puradvara age patayata. He mata 
सकलाशीलता केवाणी बेखत हे मत पुरद्वार आगे पथयत सकलाशीलता केवाणी बेखत हे मत पुरद्वार आगे पथयत सकलाशीलता के वाणी बेखत ए मत इन दिस वे पुरद्वार ऑफ द गेट वे ऑफ द टेम्पो आगे इन फ्रंट पथयत एज मेनी एवेन्यूज सकल All, All. Shodila, Shodila, were cleansed. Were cleansed. Taha, Taha, that, that. Kevani Bay. Bay. Who can describe? describe? Kata. Kata. How, How much? Translation and purport, uh, which I'll read a little later by Shil Prabhupad. The translation. Outside the gateway of the temple. All the roads were also cleansed, and no one could tell exactly how this was done. So, aside from the actual pastime, which is a reality. and um by hearing it um there is a tremendous benefit for our consciousness our spiritual lives aside from that this pastime represents and completely related to that of course uh the temple of the heart the heart is also likened to a temple we know here every temple in iskom that the lord reveals himself according to his own will and certainly if the temple is not clean he will not reveal himself There's more to it you could say than that but that's the general understanding that cleanliness the wonderful devotees who are performing daily worship here serve in their lordship so wonderfully beautifully no very well and that <coughs> of all the <coughs> principles of daily worship cleanliness is the primary one is that correct alishila prop had emphasized that above everything else Pro- first cleanliness re- then regulation everything else comes we may not be by any means as good as we could be but we try to keep that in mind and work towards it and that doesn't just mean as this past time will unfold it doesn't just mean that which is visible to our mundane eyes sometimes we're asked can you clean the temple oh yes and we just brush what is easily accessible huh? we don't go behind the vyasa san we don't clean the the uh, the grill the metal grill in front of the altar or the columns or even the chairs that's not expecting that every day someone's going to be <laughs> be all day long but the windows the walls little areas we don't see so easily underneath the cushions underneath the radiators 
Even the radiators, sometimes you run your finger, there's all kinds of dirt there. The picture frames, sometimes whoop, black. <laughs> Isn't it? Common in your home, in your bedroom, everywhere, right? Actually, a devotee likes to clean everything, not just their immediate service, but cleanliness is inseparable from God consciousness. We hear cleanliness is next to God consciousness or godliness, yeah. And even we've heard cleanliness is godliness. It's, you can't have one without the other, you could say. So, and we all know that there is inner and outer cleanliness. So this verse describes outside the gateway of the temple, all the roads were also cleansed and no one could tell exactly how this was done. Well, you can may say, well, it was done by me. I took a broom and I cleaned it and this and that. You may say, well, I did it. I chanted my rounds. I did this and that. But it's not depending on that. It's a, you could say that the special, imperceptible clean, cleansing of our hearts, which goes on by association, hearing and chanting, etc. So we'll recap a little bit the past time. It's too long perhaps to read. If we have time, we will read more later. But basically speaking, the, uh, the situation is that after Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's journey into South India, preaching, he returned to Puri, and on hearing of his return, the uh, devotees in Bengal, message came, WhatsApp message. No, they didn't have WhatsApp in those days. <laughs> but anyway, message came, and many of them, hundreds and hundreds of them proceeded to walk, to walk from Bengal to Puri, Padayatra. We have Gorangi here. She's been serving Padayatra much of her life. Still, writing, editing. So Padayatra. And when they arrived, a grand reception was there. And uh, now we have just some few days, actually, before Rathayatra they arrived. And then the day before Rathayatra, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu called upon, uh, what's it called, a Padicha, the superintendent of the temple, together with um, Kashi Mishra, who was also like a managing priest and Sagaboma Bhattacharya who was like the senior priest he called upon them and explained his will that tomorrow tomorrow I want to engage in cleaning the temple of Gundicha so they said King Prataparuda the king of Arissa had told them all Whatever Lord Chaitanya wants, you provide. Lord Chaitanya was staying um, in the house, right, of Kashimisha? Is that right? In the Gundicha, uh, in the uh, Gambira. He was staying in his house. So, and the Padicha of the temple was meant to provide whatever Lord Chaitanya wanted. So they said, my Lord, this activity of cleansing is not really befitting you. You're the, whatever, you're the supreme. <laughs> we are your servants. But if you so desire this as your pastime, 
kindly order us. Krishna's pastime, Lord Chaitanya's pastime. See this with Srila Prabhupada, how he engaged everyone in different ways, and he himself would be the leader of the, uh, let's say, the chase, or leader of the activity, whether it was cooking, cleaning, deity worship, Sankirtan. He would engage everyone. Bhakti Siddhanta Maharaj one time was giving a class, I don't know where, but one of the Gaudiya Maths. And uh, there was, outside he could see that there was, uh, it wasn't, a, things were not in order. And he sort of indicated this, and there was, we'll do later. He said, not later, now. And he got off of his Vyasa Sala and proceeded to the garden to clean up the gardens. He said, there's no difference between this and Srimad Bhagavatam class. <laughs> Prabhupada also got off his Vyasa Sala once when he saw the temple was dirty. He said, who's responsible? And you know what it's like, who's responsible, you know. Everyone looks around for someone other than myself. Um, and usually the person responsible is not there, if there is anyone <laughs> such a person. And uh, it's like, oh, whatever. And so Prabhupada then got off the, his own Vyasa to start cleaning the floor. So cleanliness in the Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu also is not just about, you know, you could say setting an example. It's about showing us the process of self-realization, cleansing the heart. As we know, love of Godhead is not something which is a physical or a uh, mechanical process. By doing so much quantity, therefore you get the result. By doing a particular activity, you get the result. It's connected, but that's not the actual causal factor. Causal factor is much, much uh, deeper. It's really the mercy of Krishna, the mercy of the devotees. To evoke that mercy, to cleanse our hearts, and Nitya Siddha Krishna Prem Sajakabhanai, that love of Godhead is not something obtained from an external source. But by the process of Shravananadi hearing and chanting attentively from the right source, gradually the heart can become cleansed by the mercy of Krishna and everything becomes revealed. Love of God also, Krishna. Internal energy bestows that mercy upon us. Right now we're covered by the external. So we're trying to clear away that external. That external means the coverings of our mind and consciousness, our, our misdirected intelligence or our misconceptions of things and our attachment to the material energy. And our false ego, our false understanding of our position. Even in devotional service, these tendencies or these coverings can still be quite prominent putting ourselves in the center, the false ego, having a very high estimation of our analysis of the situation or understanding of the philosophy or whatever it may be. And simultaneously our attachment to position or our attachment to respect and what have you. It's, uh, it's uh, covering of the living entity which has to be, if we want, to attain the goal we read every morning. Vishnu Jan leads us in the dynamic chanting of the ten offenses against the holy name. Uh, what do you have to do if you want to attain the ultimate goal? What is the ultimate goal? Krishna, Krishna Prema, love of God. And what do you have to do? What do you have to do? Huh? Avoid the ten offenses huh? while chanting the holy name. If you want to. So there's, yeah, there's a process, but ultimately this is mercy also. The mercy of the internal potency. We're praying to the holy name. We're praying to the internal potency to please release us from these coverings. Huh? Put us under your shelter. We're praying to the divine energy, Bhakti Devi, to please put us... a. May we become under her shelter. 
under her shelter. We're under our own mental and intellectual shelter, unfortunately, much of the time of Maya, we could say, really, material Mahamaya. So Lord Chaitanya taught this through this pastime of, when, when he, next day, when it came to the actual day of the cleansing, the day before Rathiatra, all of Lord Chaitanya's associates gathered. The Padicha and the other assistants, they had gathered together hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of brooms. Brooms. They didn't have any vac vacuum cleaners. Brooms. And of course, stone floors and dusty roads require not like these, well, maybe the marble is smooth like this. You could use modern brooms. But usually they use some coconut broom, broom or something with a little rough so they could get into all the little cracks in the stone and everything, you know, and sweep all the dust. So they busily engaged Lord Chaitanya at the head, leading the, leading the, the, uh, uh, the service, and they're all busily cleaning, 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 cleaning. Big piles of dust are gathering. And then again, Lord Chaitanya then, after they'd finished that temple, then washed the temple. Yes, well, we can't imitate this. They would take, then they had to bring lots and lots of water from the nearby Narendra Sarovara and into Dumna Sarovara, nearby lakes. They were bringing lots of water in pots. So all the devotees were running to get pots. Of course, the pot salesmen were very happy. They were bringing their pots and pots and pots and pots of water. There was no hose pipe. They had to bring them in pots. There were no taps to turn on. Deep. Where's the tap? Imagine, imagine if you had to go down to the lake every time you wanted water. I don't think you do very well right now. I don't, I don't think there's any much water in the lake right now. I don't know. It doesn't look like it. Huh? It's pretty, a little, but you, you know, it's kind of in the, in the rushes, you know, it's in the hidden away there. I can hear the frog, cr frogs croaking all night long practically. Um, so there's not much water down there. <laughs> and it's not particularly, probably not very clean. Um, but anyway, then they had to go to the various sarovaras or lakes to bring the water. And of course, there's hundreds and hundreds of coming and going on Lord Chaitanya's taking the water and throwing it up onto the ceiling. And the water, we can't do that here. <laughs> you have a real problem here if you try to do that. <laughs> we have modern temples and modern houses are so complicated, huh? So complicated. We made life so complicated. Anyway, we'll not get into that. But they had a stone temple, throwing the water up on the roof. The water would come down and they would, with Lord Chaitanya, with his own cloth, he was shining, cleansing the altar with his own cloth, cleansing the floor. Everyone was busy cleaning, washing, cleaning. Then again they cleaned to get out the fine grain of sand. Yes, several times cleaning to get every little grain of sand out. Not just what we can see, but the fine grains of sand. Mm -hmm. And Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, as they were bringing all these pots, there was only one word or one or two words which were communicated. He said all the time, all the devotees were chanting the holy name throughout the whole service. The holy name was all that could be heard. And if anyone wanted anything, Krishna, Hare Krishna. No one would say anything more. That indicated, you know, he wanted some more prasadam or something. There was a feast afterwards as well. Um, anyway, this was going on. Then Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu asked all the devotees to sit in rows facing each other and to gather all the dust that they collected in a pile. So different devotees had different piles of dust. And when Lord Chaitanya saw a nice big pile, he, he, he uh, praised the devotees, well done, well done. And when he saw a small pile, he chastised them. 
You're not cleaning very well. <laughs> Clean properly. He asked those who are good cleaners to teach those who are not good cleaners how to clean. <laughs> yeah. Same in the temple. Huh? Nowadays, sometimes you ask a new guest or something, please clean it. They have no idea how to do it. You say, this is a broom, this is a room. Here, sweep the room with a broom. But they don't really know, you know, what it means. Half the time, even regulars don't even move things out the way when they clean. Table's there, you don't, you know, let it stay there, never mind. I can't get the broom underneath, so it's okay. In fact, I'll sweep the dust under the table because nobody will see it. Sometimes we do that. Sweep it under the carpet, as they say. Out of the sight, out of the mind, huh? Same thing in our hearts. Huh? Oh, nobody can see. I can think of like anything I like. There's more than that. Goodness, time flies. So anyway, after all of this, they then went outside and started cleaning outside, not just inside. Yes, the gardens, there's so much to be done. I, I got this thing about the back side here, you know. But there's a nice garden growing up against the wall here. You may have noticed. It could be a little bit more tidy. Yes. Well, I'm sure that every one of us would love to volunteer to help clean it up. I don't really know what the answer is in terms of a, a long-term solution. It seems like weeds grow up very quickly. There must be a solution. Think about it. So let's have a little look at the comment, comment here, Srila Prabhupada. So it's said that, oh, an interesting thing. One of the verses describes how one Bengali Brahmachari, or Bhakta, Bhakta may not a Brahmachari maybe, but a Bhakta, saw that Lord Chaitanya was washing everything and the water was pouring down. Sometimes it would pour down and run off of his feet and he was collecting the water and drinking the water in the temple. Lord Chaitanya was very angry. He was happy inside, outside angry. Called Srupa Damodar, just see what your Bengali Vaishnav is doing. <laughs> this should never be done. Drinking the water, he has touched my feet inside the temple room. And Prabhupada goes on to explain that, and it's something you really should take into account. Even if one's own guru, Prabhupada, even if the spiritual master is present, one does not bathe their feet in the temple room or even bow down. In your heart you show respect. It's, it's a, a etiquette. Prabhupada describes it as etiquette. Of course, in the case, Prabhupada is not, he's the founder of Charya. And of course, he's in Nichalila now, so it's even different. But he was founder of Charya. He is the, you can say, exception in that sense. But normally that doesn't, you shouldn't do this. In commenting, Prabhupada says, on the cleansing of the Gundicha temple, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur says that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, as the world leader, was personally giving instructions on how one should receive Lord Krishna. Rathi after tomorrow, Lord Jagannath coming. The Supreme Personality of Godhead, not just within the temple, but within one's cleansed and purified heart. If one wants to see Krishna seated in his heart, he must first cleanse the heart. As prescribed by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in his Sikshastakam, Cheto Darpana Marjanam Bhava Maha. In this age, everyone's heart 
is especially unclean. As confirmed in Srimad Bhagavatam, Vedantak Stoya Badrani, to wash away all dirty things accumulated within the heart. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu advised everyone to chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So we go out onto the streets of Tours huh? and chant Hare Krishna. We can take brooms out with us too if you wish. I think the local council, maybe they like it, maybe they'd arrest us thinking we were crazy. I'm not sure. You see people who do that, they're judged as crazy, right? A person on their own account goes in the street and starts sweeping the street. <laughs> you think the guy's crazy. <laughs> and in one sense, it's the right thing to do. But at least chanting the holy names outside on the streets, chanting. Huh? Oh, on Wednesday, by the way, this week is Music Fest, National Music Festival, this coming Wednesday. It's New Year's, no, what is it called? Mid Midsummer's Day. Midsummer's Day, the longest day of the year, whatever that means. I thought they were all the same length, but anyway, apparently it's the longest day of the year. And uh, some of us, and I know most of you have service, but if you're not engaged, and don't forget, you have to do your service in the morning also. Uh, not, no excuse. Uh, we will be going out in the, uh, we would hope to, some of us, going out on Harinam in probably in tours. There's lots of people gather in the evening in tours. I mean, last time I went, it was so busy. I'm very busy in so many, and that day you can do music. You can, I don't know if you can do it in the key or not. I'm not sure if it's allowed everywhere, but certainly in the towns you can go out in the city and sing and dance and bang your drums and blow your trumpets and whatever else you want to do and loudly. Yeah, very loudly. Boom. So I don't know if you did it last year or not. There's been COVID been perhaps stopping this. I don't know, but this year. At least we're going out, a few of us, and we try to and chant and dance. But it'll be in the evening, so it will be get back quite late. So please bear that in mind if you have service or other things that we may be back at 10 or 11 at night. So it's a little late. You can come back earlier. We'll leave probably about 4.30, something like that. Uh, cleansing outside. The first resort will be that the heart is cleansed. Shrinvatam svakata krishna punya shravana kirtana vriyantak stoya badrani vidu no titsavitsatam Sri Krishna, the personality of Godhead, who is the paramatma, super soul in everyone's heart and the benefactor of the truthful devotee, cleanses desire for material enjoyment. Yeah, that's, you know, that's the main point. It's not so much cleanses away your you know, sinful reactions in the sense of, you know, being punished for doing something naughty. But he cleanses away the desire. A little bit more at the root, huh? That's the real thing. Not just the surface. It's like, you know, you go out in the fields and there are weeds and you just pull on the surface, huh? And you rip off the weed but the root is still in the ground. You got to dig in there and get the roots out. And the seeds. Sometimes they have seeds. That's more difficult. But you have to get out the cause. Go to the cause, not just the effect. The roots. So cleanses desire for material enjoyment from the heart of the devotee who relishes his messages. Nice, eh? relish. And I was reading yesterday somewhere else altogether, but Prabhupada said, 
Hey, no, it's not Srila Prabhupada, it's Vishwanath Chakravarti writing that the symptomat, symptomatic of advancement is that we're developing a relish to hear and chant the holy name and to hear and chant about Krishna or Krishna's devotees. This is the symptomatic of advancement. If we're losing our taste, we're doing something wrong. Something's not right. You have to look into that. Um, which these messages are in themselves virtuous when properly heard and chanted. If a devotee at all wants to cleanse his heart, he must chant and hear the glories of the Lord. This is a simple process. Krishna himself will help cleanse the heart because he's already seated there. Krishna wants to continue living in the heart and the Lord wants to give directions, but one has to keep his heart as clean as Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu kept the Gundicha temple. The devotee therefore has to cleanse his heart just as the Lord cleansed the Gundicha temple. In this way one can be pacified and enriched in devotional service. If the heart is filled with straw, grains of sand, weeds or dust, Oh, my heart's not full of grains of sand. I've got blood and flesh in there. No sand, no grains, no straws, no dust. Right? What does it mean? If the heart is filled with straw, grains of sand, weeds or dust, what does that mean? Let's see. Or, Prabhupada says, in other words, anyabilasita purna. We know this verse, anyabilasita anyabilasita <coughs> sunyam. But here Prabhupada says purna. What does that mean? Full. Full. Full of all kinds of other desires. Full of it. Unending. Never stops. Huh? It doesn't just mean gross sense objects, as we mentioned earlier. It can be subtle misconceptions, desires for so many false, false positions and so on, false concepts, envious mentality, so many things. Fault finding, we'll hear more on that in a minute. So many things there. If it's full like that, one cannot enthrone the Supreme Personality of Godhead there. He's there, but we wouldn't, he will not reveal himself. The heart must be cleansed of all material motives. Motives, not just desires, but motives. Brought about through fruitive work, speculative knowledge, mystic yoga system, and so many other forms of so-called meditation. All these are actually different coverings to the heart. Thinking I'm the center. I need, I'm God, maybe. An avatar, prophet says sometimes, we may think. That we're all God. These are all very dirty coverings of the heart. Or that now I'm powerful, I have mystic powers, the goal of my life is to become liberated. All this is contamination in the heart. As Srila Rupa Goswami says, Anyabilashita shunyam, without any other material desire. In other words, there should not be any external motive. That's why I said devotional service is causeless. No external motive, no external cause. It's caused by devotion. One should not attempt material upliftment. Understanding the supreme by speculative knowledge, not fruitive activity, nor severe austerity and penance, and so on. All these activities are against the natural growth of spontaneous love of Godhead. As soon as these are present within the heart, the heart should be understood to be unclean and therefore unfit to serve as Krishna's sitting place. 
We cannot perceive the Lord's presence in our hearts unless our hearts are cleansed. I'm going to jump forward in a purport now. There's a long section here describing those various aspects of impersonal mentality and desire for fruitive results and so on, or what it means to material desire, economic, all these things are di discussed. The, uh, the four uh, perfections of human life, you know, in most people's um, minds of religion up to liberation, all these things are dirt within the heart. I will go on a little bit later in the purport, Prabhupada says, by his practical example, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has shown us that all the grains of sand must be picked up thoroughly and thrown outside. Now, we don't do that so much now. Uh, so if we have little buckets, what do you call these? Pans, brush and pan. Or if you have a, a, a electric, who, what do you call them? Who, not, we call them hoovers, what's it? Vacuum cleaner. Uh, a vacuum cleaner. Um, but, and then, you know, we don't just throw it out the window. You might do. Maybe you do that, I don't know. <coughs> but usually we don't. Uh, unless there's some other program to clean everything outside at the same time. But they did. They, were, they didn't have these things in those days. In any case, it was just dust. There was not much... Yes, they, there was no plastic and all the other stuff that we have nowadays. And then, they, of course, they also cleansed outside. Mahaprabhu also cleaned the outside of the temple, fearing that the grains of sand would again come in to keep a good, clean environment. Otherwise, there's every chance the dirt will come in again. That means, in our case, association. Yeah. If we associate with persons who are fault finders, who are negative, who are materialistic, uh, have big agendas, etc., uh, then there's every chance we'll become, by that association, that mentality will also enter into our own consciousness, if it's not already there. If it's already there, we'll just increase it. Shilbhakti Siddhanta Saraswati explains that even though one may become free from the desire for fruitive activity, sometimes the subtle desire for fruitive activity again, again comes into being within the heart. And I'm sure some of you can relate to this. But the contamination is so strong that it may later develop into misunderstanding. Described as kuti nati. What is kuti nati? Pardon? Kuti Nati is? Well, Prabhupada said misunderstanding, then he says Kuti Nati. Kuti Nati or Kuti Nati? Kuti Nati. What is it? Fault finding. I don't, I guess nobody here has ever had that problem of fault finding. Big topic, huh? Requires a sessions in itself. And Patishtasha, which means? Patishta, yeah, Patishta. The desire for name and fame, desire for recognition, the desire for a position, to be seen, to be in the center, the all-pervading tendency of conditioned souls. Huh? To, naturally children, they're always looking for attention. But as adults, we should understand that's not the goal of life. Look what I did. I am the doer. It's the mentality of seeing oneself as the doer, as the enjoyer. And you want recognition. And we get upset sometimes when we don't get it. When we're ignored. Why is this always happening to me? I'm doing such nice service. Nobody ever recognizes me. He gets all the praise. Sitting up on that chair. He's doing nothing. I'm doing all the work. Right? Yeah. He's starting to think now. 
But sometimes Krishna's hand is action too. He wants to free us from this. And sometimes when this is, if we're lucky, if we have this tendency a little bit more than expected at our present stage, then Krishna may frustrate us sometimes. And you keep wondering, why does this always happen to me? It's a common thing I hear. Because we're attached. We're attached to something which we shouldn't be attached to. And Krishna doesn't want us to depend on that attachment. If we're lucky, he takes it away. Petition, desire for name and fame and high position. Jiva Hinksa, what is Jiva Hinksa? Violence. Violence too? Living Other living entities. You'll see, interesting what Prabhupada defines that to be, mean. Envy of other living entities. Nishidachara. 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 What does that mean? Accepting things forbidden in the Shastra. That means according to our own position. I mean, what is forbidden for one is not forbidden for another. According to our position in society. <coughs> There's some general things, but there are detailed things also. Knowing what they are and avoiding them. Jiva, no, no, no. Kama. What's kama? Normally lust. Desire for material gain. Puja. Hankering for? Adoration or popularity. The word kutinati means, also, as Lochan said earlier, duplicity. As an example of patishtasa, duplicity means what? Opposite of simplicity. Huh? Opposite. Opposite, very good. Opposite of simplicity. What is simplicity? Opposite of duplicity. It's obvious. Very simple. <laughs> exactly. Oh. What happened? Oh, Sangeeta. <laughs> oh, Jeeva, is that Jiva Hinksa? I hope not. <laughs> not a worry. No offense. Um, yeah, trying to imitate is also this duplicity, imitation. Trying to imitate. And Prabhupada says that here once. Uh, an example of, pat of um, patishtasa. One may attempt to imitate Srila Haridas Thakur by living in a solitary place. One's real desire may be for name and fame. In other words, one thinks that fools will accept one to be as good as Haridas. Just because one lives in a solitary place. Imitation. Huh? These are all material desires. A neophyte devotee is certain to be attacked by other material desires as well. Mainly, or namely, desires for women and money. In this way, the heart is again filled with dirty things and becomes harder and harder. It means less and less. The heart has to become soft. It becomes soft. So the Lord can, uh, is very happy to reside there. It's another topic, what it means to have a soft heart. A neophyte devotee is attacked. In this way, the heart is again filled and becomes harder and harder, like that of a materialist. And one gradually develops other desires, you know, desires for mundane activities, and maybe, you know, criticizing our activities of devotees and thinking we should be doing other things for the material aspect of life and so many other things come in. They may have their part, but they're still a little dangerous, you could say, when we see ourselves becoming more attracted to mundane welfare activity than we are, uh, uh, losing our understanding of this... Um, uh, process of cleansing the heart, the most important thing in the, in the world is the Sangatan movement. <laughs> Gradually, one desires to become a reputed devotee or an avatar. 
One wants to establish one's own philosophy, basically, one's own movement. The word jiva hingsa, envy of other living entities, actually means, so probably gives a, another angle of definition here. He says it actually means stopping the preaching of Krishna consciousness. So that can be seen in various ways. Either we stop preaching or we try to stop others from preaching. Preaching work is described as paropakara, welfare activities for others, the highest welfare work. Those who are ignorant of the benefits of devotional service must be educated by preaching. If one stops preaching and simply sits down in a solitary place, he is engaging in material activity. If one desires to make a compromise with the Mayavadis, He's also engaged in material activity. A devotee should never make compromises with non-devotees. Of course, we sometimes have to act according to the law, according to the situation, but not that we compromise and adopt their very policies in our hearts, etc. Externally, we may have to do this and that. By acting as a professional guru, mystic yogi, or miracle man, one may cheat and bluff the general public and gain fame as a wonderful mystic. But all this is considered to be dust, straw, and grains of sand within the heart, which we have to cleanse out, of course. In addition, one should follow the regulated principles and not desire illicit sex, gambling, intoxicants, or meat. To give us practical instructions, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu cleansed the temple twice. His second cleansing was more thorough. The idea was to throw away all the stumbling blocks on the path of devotional service. He cleansed the temple with firm conviction, as is evident from his using his own personal garments for cleansing. Not everyone else. You should clean. Sometimes we think it's everyone else's responsibility when I'm having a problem. But the actual point is that is we who should look at our own problems. When faults in other misguide and delude you, Bhakti Siddhanta Maharaj said, look within, find out our own faults. Huh? Pry not into the frailties of others. Look within, amend thyself. When we see faults outside, is indicative also of perhaps something which we have to do within our own hearts. That's our primary, you could say, activity, is cleansing our own heart. It's easy to see faults in others or around us. Not difficult, but to look in our own hearts first, first and foremost. That's what we're here for. And, of course, that does, as Prabhupada says here, it includes preaching, going out and distributing Krishna consciousness with others. He <laughs> Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu wanted to see personally that the temple was thoroughly cleansed to the standard of clean marble. Clean marble gives a cooling effect. Devotional service means attaining peace from all disturbances caused by material contamination. Wouldn't that, that would be nice. In other words, it is the process by which the mind is cooled. To cool the mind, keep cool. Keep a cool mind. The mind can be peaceful and thoroughly cleansed when one no longer desires anything but devotional service. Even though all dirty things may be cleansed away, sometimes subtle desires remain in the mind. For impersonalism, monism, success, and the four principles of religious activity, all these are like spots on clean cloth. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu also wanted to cleanse all of these away. By his practical activity, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu informed us how to cleanse our hearts. 
Once the heart is cleansed, we should invite Lord Krishna to sit down and we should observe the festival by distributing prasadam and chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu used to teach every devotee by his personal behavior. Everyone who spreads the cult of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu accepts a similar responsibility. The Lord was personally chastising and praising individuals in the course of the cleaning. And those who are engaged as acharyas must learn from Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu how to train devotees by personal example. That's an interesting sentence, huh? Prabhupada is writing this. And who's he writing it for? He's not obviously not writing it for the past acharyas. He says here, the Lord was personally chastising and praising individuals in the course of the cleaning. And those who are engaged as acharyas must learn from Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu how to train devotees by personal example. Prabhupada's purport. So I don't you can I don't know if you can speculate or if you assume that Prabhupada is referring to those followers who are acting as acharyas. Because acharya can be used in different ways, one who teaches by example, leading others. The Lord was very pleased with those who could cleanse the temple by taking out undesirable things accumulated within. This is called anarta nivriti, cleansing the heart of all unwanted things. Thus, the cleansing of the Gundicha Mandir was conducted by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to let us know how the heart should be cleansed and soothed. To receive Lord Sri Krishna and enable him to sit within the heart without disturbance. End of purport. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Yeah. Right. One time, two devotees, they played a, a special game, fault finding. You know, good friends, same level. I'll find your fault, you'll find your fault. You know, so finding fault? Yeah, but in a friendly way. In a friendly way. To be pretty it's an exercise which is interesting. Um, I, I find this one of the most difficult things in my life. You know you've got a fault inside, but you don't know where, how, and what to do about it. Who to talk to about it. You know, it's a very interesting thing, um, which probably one, one of the major holdups in our spiritual lives not being honest or not being able to let it out and deal with it. Probably as an institution also. And being open, being open to, uh, we may take it as a criticism or we may take it as an opportunity to uh, improve or to learn. We may take it as being, you know, somebody's envious or we may take it as an opportunity to become humbled. It's, um, you know, Krishna's hand is working. We see many references to this, of how when a devotee is apparently, or we as a movement are criticized or whatever it is, an opportunity to look at ourselves and see what does Krishna, what is he teaching me here? What lesson am I to learn here? So if you have such a friend that you can do that with, this is very, uh, you could say, a, a very good fortune. You can actually, you know, happily reveal and hear from others. Sometimes we don't even realize it. I was talking to a senior devotee here just recently. And uh, they, they looked at me in a bit of a shock. I, I, they were saying something and, and I could see that they were definitely thinking about it. So I said, Prabhu, I'm, I mean, please say whatever you like to me, but... I just wanted to let you know that, you know, it's something up, 
it's not just me, it's others too. But the way you behaved in the past really hurt a lot of devotees. Really? Really? Yeah. Tell me about it. They wanted to know. They never really analyzed it before. They never really felt like that. They thought they were doing good. And we, we, we have this tendency to not really hear. We don't get feedback you know, sometimes. And we don't really know how our behavior is affecting others or whatever. It's getting detailed, you could say. But at least we should be a little bit self-reflective like this. You know? It'd be nice to have that openness, but it's not something for a public forum in general, especially nowadays with social media being what it is. So it's confidentiality. It's not, Rupa Goswami says, revealing one's mind in confidence. He doesn't say in public. And now conf even confidentiality is a hard thing to get nowadays. Even with friends sometimes. It's pretty hard, and it's one of the biggest challenges, I think, which, at least which I face, I don't know about others, of having that. You know you can't go forward unless you let go, you know? It's like you're still holding on to something, you know, and you can't, you don't know what, how to let go of it. You chant and chant and pray and pray, and our chanting may not be so sincere or so pure, and our prayers may not be so pure or unmotivated, etc. Uh, we, need, we need help. And unfortunately, I said, I was talking to Burujan Prabhu one time about this, and he said, Maharaj, this is not a very merciful world. It's very cruel. Very cruel. You try to be honest, and people kill you, practically. It's, not a, it's a very unkind environment that we live in. So, you know, in, amongst devotees, that confidentiality, that Genuine appreciation and love is a very valuable asset if you have it. Very good fortune to have such a personality whom you can honestly, you know. I remember one time, I, I actually wrote a letter to um, a sannyas minister one time who I had next to no personal relationship with. Like he was pushing me all the time to do something, you know. And in the sannyas ministry. And I didn't want to do it for various reasons. But I couldn't tell him why. But eventually I, let, I wrote him a complete letter and wrote everything I wanted to, you know, explain why. And I thought, okay, that's probably the end of me as a, a member of ISKCON or a member of the sannyasi or something. But he wrote me back such a nice letter, I couldn't believe it. So this is, it was like, I'm so happy to hear that you, you know, that you, you know, opened up like this and said what you wanted to say, et cetera, et cetera. And he said, now I understand, all's good. Just carry on. It was, I was surprised. I never expected that. Um, so it does happen, but sometimes it goes the other way as well. <laughs> it goes the opposite way. <laughs> Krishna, there's always a reason for that too, by the way, but that's not always easy, so easy to stomach. It's not always so easy to stomach. There's other lessons to learn. Um, because ultimately we don't belong here. Ultimately we're not here to get name and fame, position, prestige, followers, etc. We're here to <laughs> become pleasing to Krishna, <laughs> to go back to Godhead, right? That's what we're here for. And if the heart's still dirty, then... That doesn't take place. So everything has its good reason, you could say, but it's a great opportunity, it's, it's a challenge to have that opportunity to really hear from others without any inhibition and also be able to reveal one's heart. This is the process of loving exchange, isn't it? It's essential. Rupa Goswami is a, is a sensual stage. If we want to go to the next stage, this is an essential, the verses are, uh, what do you call it? In order. One leads to the next in the Upadeshamrita, basically. But without this one, this loving exchange, it's very hard to go to the next stage. Devotional service. Okay, Shri Prabhupada ki jai, Shri Chaitanya Charitamrita ki jai, Gundicha Marjana ki jai, Gora Premanandi, oh, Gopaswami Prabhu. Uh, when
in some instances, maybe, maybe extreme, I read in uh, Pure Bhakti Siddhanta's life, once a man came and for three days he heavily criticized him. You know, he came to the temple and he was in front of his head, and why this and do that, he got three days. Three days? Yeah, the fourth day the man died. <laughs> yes. And then Sri Bhakti Siddhanta said, I am so pained. He was in instructing me. I could not recognize. He was my guru. Isn't that amazing? We see this with saintly persons. Francis of Assisi said more or less the same thing when he was criticized or, you know, I'd say put down. He saw this as, you are my best friend. You are my best friend. Uh, in the verse it is said that uh, no one could understand how the outside uh, was had been cleansed. So as you say, sometimes it is difficult to um, uh, cleanse our heart uh, with the uh, help of others. So how can it be, you know, without knowing it will be cleansed? Maybe it is just desiring, expressing inside, I don't know how to do that, please Krishna, you know, and then Krishna sooner or later will... Yeah, something. it's Krishna. Yeah. Krishna's internal energy, how that works. Mm. Hard for us to understand how people are being, not just ourselves, but how people are being cleansed when you mm. share Krishna consciousness with others, they take prasadam or the holy name or whatever it is. It's going on imperceptibly. It doesn't look like it, but it's going on. In our own hearts too. I was reading last night, uh, Keshava Maharaj, who wrote to me, I can't remember some, but they were saying that, uh, he said that, uh, let me see if I can get it right. This, sometimes we think, oh boy, look where you're at. You have, you know, you've got so far to go. He said, no, look how far you've come. Not how far you've got to go, but how far you've come. It's a miracle. It's a miracle. How is it the devotees are, you know, living in this world? I mean, most of us have come from such conditional backgrounds, are no longer eating meat, drinking liquor, smoking, whatever we were doing, going to cinemas, I don't know, whatever we were doing. This thing and that. Kind of miraculous. Absolutely miraculous. It may take time, you could say, but it can happen like that also. Quite. <coughs> Prabhupada said, this is my magic. Prabhupada himself, of course, as we remember, it was in Montreal that there was that Indian man who was coming to the temple quite frequently. And then when Prabhupada gave a public program, he stood up and started criticizing Prabhupada in public like anything. Prabhupada remained quiet, he never said a thing. He never said a thing. And the devotees were like, Wah. Prabhupada didn't say anything. He said, I must. Well, Prabhupada's answer, at least that's what we hear, was he said, I must have offended him in my last lifetime. So the devotees see it in different ways. They don't see it like, you know, this person's, I've got to get my own back on them or they're my enemy. Whatever Bhakti Sadhana said, this man was acting like my guru. It was my guru speaking through this man. Don't just see how pure devotee sees things. We probably don't see it like that. Probably not. At least that's not our first reaction, generally speaking. <coughs> Srila Prabhupada, thank you very much, Gopaswami Prabhu. You said uh, this outside cleaning means uh, association. So, wh what does this mean? We have to be cleaned by association? Well, I was thinking more in t well, several angles there. One, of course, it's in terms of our preaching, which Prabhupada said going outside to preach, one. And secondly, uh, where Lord Chaitanya is saying, he cleansed outside to make sure that the dirt didn't come back in again. So though we become cleansed, if we have bad association, then again the heart becomes cloudy or dirty. So we 
the, keeping as good association as we can environmentally as well as association of devotees who are more favorable, you could say, for our progress is also important. Because if we associate with devotees who are, let's say, seem to be of, um, in, inclined towards these various dust and grains of sand, etc., uh, then we all know that that tendency can well, again, contaminate our consciousness. And it's probably the most common result, um, uh, cause of, uh, of, uh, of, let's say, becoming unenthusiastic, becoming negative, becoming whatever, giving up devotional service even, becoming critical and so on. It, Prabhupada said it so many times, didn't he? In Vrindavan, particularly devotees associating intimately with Babaji's, we show respect, but we don't intimately associate or with pandits. And you can see the effect. Or to speak of associating intimately with materialistic persons, we start to doubt Krishna consciousness. We start to, you know, find fault in, even in Prabhupada and so many things. Very easy. Watching nonsense on the television or on your mobile rubbish YouTube things and this and that. It's all about association, reading unnecessarily mundane literatures. All these things are, you know, dirty things out there. We have to be careful. <clears throat> protect ourselves and in another purport in that we didn't read it but in the in maybe later chapter uh, again this subject matter comes up of the um, the different um, you know dirt within our heart and the importance of um, association the importance of protecting ourselves specifically is Lord Chaitanya's teachings to um, Sanatana Goswami. The importance of protecting, not just engaging in activities of devotion, but protecting our devotional service as well, so the dirt doesn't come back in again. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai, Gaur